I might have an addiction. My friends over at Redivus released the A1. It's a new radio. Had to get it. Had to share it with you. Howdy, everybody. Steve here, KM9G. Let's go take a look. We've got a Redivus A1. Where is it? There it is. This is VHF and UHF. Let's take a look. User's manual. That's a new shape for our radio. I haven't seen that before. It's a big manual. That looks like five and a half, eight and a half, and it is all English. It's kind of thin though. Docking cradle. All USB-C docking cradle. They're getting there. They're getting better all the time. There we go. Look at that. Let's get rid of that junk. Nobody wants to see that. That is a chunky knob. USB port, microphone port, headphones. Uh, I'm getting excited. PTT up and down. That feels, that actually feels pretty good. When you exit all, all the good stuff, belt clip and lanyard. And there's your USB-C cable. It is a A to C cable and it does not come with a wall wart. Bring your own warts. Oh, well, that's tight to begin with. No, I'm not using the blade. I'm using the backside. Calm down, people. See where I'm from, we call that a tool, not a weapon. That just flew across the room. Okay, so there's like a waterproof dust cover that just picked up all the dust and dirt off my floor. And then there is this cover here that holds it nice and tight. So apparently the USB-C connector is automatically waterproof and then this one here needs some assistance. Y'all probably saw that dust cover fly out when it flew out, but there it is. And these things, for some reason, their dust covers or waterproof covers, they pick up all the dust and waterproofedness off of my floor. So let's get that put back in there before we lose it. So there is the one for the headphone and microphone, and there is the one for the USB. So now we're back to being waterproof. All right, underneath we have a 2200 milliamp hour battery, 16.28 watt hours. This is model BL1. And we have a radio, the FCC ID is two, I can't even read that, 2A300RTA1. Put that back on and lock it in place. Let's plug in our USB-C cable. And there's a little blue light up there and there's a GPS icon. Does this have real GPS? Oh, that's said with authority. GNSS. GPS on off, GPS info. Latitude, longitude, speed. Altitude. That says SA00. Time. Date, probably not going to get a GPS lock indoors. Time zone, nice. Confirm. Okay, weather forecast is on. Weather alarm is on. That's actually a nice feature to have, the weather alarm. I like that. Radio info, the ANI ID and the firmware. The ANI ID is incomplete. Squelch, step, vox, vox delay, timeout timer, beep, voice. It's already on. So this is as much visually impaired assistance as you're going to get. Power save, key lock, PTT lock, dual standby, brightness, light time, menu exit time, MDF A, MDF B, DTMF ST, ID edit, ID delay, language, alarm mode, tail, tone burst, repeater tail revert, repeater tail delay, FM interrupt, short option, long option. So this is programming the buttons. So SK1 is set for scanning right now, but monitor, quick search, sub-PTT, comp and radio, scramble. Oh, it's got that scramble feature. Alarm, voltage, 
scan, we'll just leave it where it's at. So you can program the side buttons to be whatever you want. Power on display, identity code, radio identity, factory reset. There we go. Okay, let's go to program. Channel name, you can program the channel name from the front panel, really? Okay, now we've named the channel to no name dot dot dot. Okay, so pressing pound changes it from lowercase to uppercase to numbers. I see no way to erase it. Let's not worry about the channel name. Receive frequency. Okay, so we've got the receive frequency, the transmit frequency. Four, four, nine, zero, 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 zero. Confirm. Transmit frequency, receive encoding. It's a CTCSS tone, and we're going to do 110.9. And we need one on the transmit side, which is also CTCSS and is also 110.9. Confirm. Bandwidth is wide, that's fine. TX power is high. Busy lock, DTMF system, PTT ID, Compander. Scan add, scramble, offset. We shouldn't really need an offset. Cancel. Invalid. Okay, that worked weird. Cancel. Why is that invalid? Cancel. Maybe because I already have a TX frequency up here. Zero, 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 zero. Cancel. Yeah, it left it the way it is. We're going to leave that with no offset because I've already programmed in a transmit and a receive pair. That could actually be very useful if you were trying to program in a satellite and the transmit and receive were on two different frequencies. The offset direction, don't need to do that because I've already programmed it in. Channel memory, save it to channel four. All right, we got it back. I was horizontal, the repeater's vertical, and I'm close enough that that probably matters. It appears to have a GPS lock. Let's check Thank GPS you. now. Yep, we've got GPS info. I've got altitude of 251.8 meters. SA11, it's gotten the time. It's gotten the date. All that is correct. And it did show my longitude latitude, but I'm not sharing that with y'all. I know how you people are. All right, so the GPS works indoors, which is nice. I am 6 feet, 10 feet from a window. And programming from the front panel works, except for editing the channel name. And the radio works. Excellent stuff. Let's do some power testing. All right, we have our favorite power tester device. This is the Shorecom SW102, and it is on, let's change it over to channel A, which is 146.865, and we're on high power. 3.42 watts with a three to one SWR. Wow. Better antenna will do you much better. Right, let's change it to mid. There we go. All right, so we're at 1.88 watts at mid power, 2.67 SWR. Confirm. All 
All right, this is low power. You can see LO up there. 0.21 watts, nice. 1.79 to one SWR. Frequency mode, four, four, six, zero, zero, zero. All right, excellent. So four, four, six, zero, 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 high power again. 6.64 watts, better SWR on the antenna, helps you get better power out. Switch power down. Mid power. Four point two three, four point two five. Confirm. All right, point point seven eight. I saw point six eight, one point one two to one SWR. Looking pretty good. This is my tiny SA Nano VNA Go box. And inside I have, as you might imagine, my tiny SA and my nano VNA. I'm going to need my tiny SA and I'm going to need my attenuator here. This is a 40 dB 10 watt attenuator, so it will protect the tiny SA from the radio by dampening the signal. Let's get this all set up. Okay, there we go. All right, we got it on high power. Let's get the tiny SA set up to get this job done. All right, I want to measure harmonic of 146.52 megahertz. I want to display, draw a line at minus 16.02 to account for the second requirement. First requirement is 40 dB down. Third requirement is 25 microwatts. Minus 16.02 dB is 25 microwatts. I want to account for my external attenuator with minus 40 dB of gain. And you'll see that minus 40 dB of gain over there. And then we are ready to key up. And it takes a while for this thing to sort itself out and settle out, and it's getting pretty close. This is something where it is close enough that I might want to put it on a real piece of test gear in order to figure it out. But we are 45 dB down from the primary, and then we did not make the second requirement. That could be the tiny SA, it could be the radio. So close enough but not quite yet legal. Let's try a different power setting. Menu. Mid power. I wonder if this is showing me, no, it says 146.5 for, for number one. I wonder why there's a spur down there, but now we're right on the two mark at mid power. I feel like I'm playing a Mario Brothers game or something. Confirm. All right, this is low power. Yeah, and we're getting close to that two mark. Yeah, low power it is safe, mid power it is safe, and then high power, I'd, it's pretty close. I'd wanna check it on a better piece of test gear. All right, so it has a USB plug on the side. I am going to check it out. I hope that is for programming. And then it also comes with, it comes with a drop-in cradle that has a USB-C port on the back. And then you can drop the radio, oddly enough, you can drop the radio into the drop-in charger and then it lights up orange to tell you that it's charging. Well, I guess it goes green when it is fully charged. But now you have a way to sit this thing up on your desk and you can leave this port on the side closed for waterproof protection. All right, I just checked and as of the time of this recording, which is April 20th, there is a new download of Chirp from 419 yesterday, and the Redivis A1 is not included. Doesn't mean it won't be included, it just means it's currently not included. So if you have this and it is not for 2024, check it out, see what happens. If you are a Windows user, however, Redivis does have its own programming software for this radio for Windows. I'm not a Windows user, can't help you there. I'm not 100% sure what is going on, but when I plug a USB cable that came with the radio into my computer, it doesn't show up as a device. When I used a known good USB data cable, it also doesn't show up as a device. It may not be USB-C programmable. I'm hoping it is. I don't have any ability to check that out right now because I don't have Windows. So if you guys get one of these, let me know what you all think about it. It does have GPS functionality built in. It does work and it works pretty good indoors. It doesn't have any built-in APRS support. I don't know if that GPS data can be exported over the USB-C port because it didn't show up as a device. Maybe future firmware updates will 
change that out. I'm not 100% sure. So without APRS functionality in the radio, you are kind of limited as to what you can do. It does set the date and time, so you could look at the date and time if you're making logs or something along those lines. And also, you can tell where you are, and then you can write that down, and you can go off in some direction, and you can tell where you are now, and you know where you used to be, and you can get yourself back there. It doesn't appear to have a compass function, so you're going to have to make one of those while you're out in the field. See, ham radio is fun. There will be links in the description down below for more information for this radio. There's another video right over here I think you'll enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.